This is Dave Smeltz from The Voice of Victory. I'm running late tonight, but I had a problem with my internet, and I think maybe, I hope maybe we got it fixed. So we've been working on this with the new equipment, trying to get it all together. I'm sorry, but we're here, and praise God for that. And I, I'm just thankful that the God allows us to do what we need to do. I was sitting here just saying, okay, Lord, I got to get this thing going. We're running late. And finally, it was amazing how I kept digging around and digging around, and I finally found uh, what I needed to do. And so hopefully, it'll stay in there. We'll see how it does and see if it sticks with us for a while anyway. God is good. God knows what he's doing. Listen, there's a song here that I'd like to play for you. That's a song that I've, I sang on some one of my CDs. These are not the best because I'm running them through another source. I'd like to get them on something a little bit better sound. But here's a song, He Touched Me. My son called in the process of that, and uh, hey, you probably heard me talking to him, wishing me a happy Father's Day. Uh, we went to lunch with him this afternoon, he and our grandchildren, and we had a wonderful time together. <laughs> and praise God for the uh, opportunity of uh, just visiting with my children. I, I've heard from all of them. If you've been watching Facebook, you might see some of the things that they've sent. What a blessing. God has blessed us with such wonderful children. We have five wonderful children. We praise God 
for uh, all that our children are and what they're doing and loving God and that's what it's all about is just serving the Lord in one capacity or another you know I um, I'm excited for what God is doing with us we're seeing a lot of good things happen the surgeries I've had on my back have started to work some I got one more to do and that will be sometime in July and hopefully that'll be the last of them but things are getting a little bit better the other day I walked about a half a mile that's a long ways because I couldn't even walk uh, 200 feet before and so I'm, I'm thankful for God and what he's doing pray for me that I can continue to do what I'm doing I'm trying to get ready to go to Guatemala in September being able that I have to walk and do go up and down stairs and stuff I want to be able to do that and uh, so uh, I'm really praying that I'm going to be in really good shape to do that. So pray for me. Pray for me that we continue to do that. I've lost a little weight. I'm working on that. When you don't get the exercise that you're supposed to get, you have to be careful what you eat. You have to watch that. And, and uh, I have a tendency to gain weight. I've had that all my life. Uh, and so uh, I have to really watch it. And I got a little too much. <laughs> I really do have a little too much. And I need to lose some of it. But I'm working on it. And, uh, you know, I, I had a song we used to sing. He's still working on me. <laughs> That's what he's doing. He's still working on, on me. Well, you know, tonight's message is a nation that is losing its way. A, new, a nation that's losing its way. And uh, I, I don't know if you've been watching. But I have, for, for the last several years, watched our nation go backwards. I, I look back when I was a child and remember some of the things that were there that were in place that uh, were so much different than what we have today. We, we look at the television set and we look at the filth and garbage that's on that. Look at the movies and see the filth and garbage. To think that you've got drag queens on a, on a on a football field or a baseball field this is this is beyond me I mean I don't know about you this is totally beyond me to think that we have allowed this kind of stuff to go on this is going back to Sodom and Gomorrah even further than that it's going back to where God destroyed the earth because of the sin that was there you know this is terrible folks when we start to look at it I was thinking today that a hundred years from now, if we make a hundred years from now, there will not be in America probably a white race. It'll be mixed. There won't be any whites. The only place you'll probably find whites will be in Eastern Europe. You'll still find the yellows because that's China and Japan and uh, Indonesia because they hold to the, the values of their heritage. While here in America, we have no value. We do anything we want to do. We are completely making and destroying the races here in this country. We're doing that. And that you may want to call that racism, but that's not racism. That's a fact. We are not, we are one people in blood, but we are not one people in color. And we need to realize that God made us different colors for a different reason. And we can't take that away from God. But we're trying to change that. Just like we're trying to change uh, the children that are born. If we don't like them as a boy, we want to change them to a girl. If we don't like them as a girl, we want to change We are a sick bunch of people, folks. If you think about it, we are a sick nation. We are really going backwards. And we are a nation that's losing its way. And God has something to say about it. And I want to share something with you tonight. Look with me at Psalm chapter 43, verses 1 to 5. Notice what it says. Judge me, O God. And plead my cause against the ungodly nation. Or deliver me from the deceitful and unjust men. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I a, a mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O send out the light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me into the holy hill, into thy tabernacle. Then will I go unto the altar of God, and unto God and my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted with me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Father, we thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Father, for your love and mercy. We thank you, Father, for letting us live in this free country for all these years, knowing that it's going backwards, 
knowing that it's destroying itself among itself. God, help our nation. Turn our nation back to you, God, before it's too late. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for those that listen. I pray that this message will go out to each and every one. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think about the scripture where it says, The truth will set you free. But sometimes the truth hurts. The truth really hurts. Here in just a few weeks, we are going to commemorate the adoption of the Declaration of Independence. That's on July 4th. That happened in 1776 by the Continental Congress declaring that the 13 American colonies regarding themselves as a new nation, the United States of America, and no longer part of the British Empire. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, the only signers of the Declaration of Independence, later to serve as presidents of the United States, died on the same day, July 4, 1826, which was the 50th anniversary of the Declaration. Although not a signer of the Declaration of Independence, but another founding father who became president, James Monroe, died on July 4, 1831. Thus becoming the third president in a row who died on the holiday, Calvin Coolidge, the 30th president, was born on July 4, 1872. And so far is the only U.S. president who, had, who was born on Independence Day. This is a very important day to America, July 4th. Maybe not as important as it used to be, just like 9-1-1 is being forgotten, just like all the people that are tear tearing down all the statues and all the things that of this country and of its founding fathers. We have lost our way, friends. We've allowed people to just take over this nation and destroy everything that we've stood for. We've allowed our moral standards to fall. We've, we've Once things that were done in the closet are no longer done in the closet, now they're open. Now we can see just last week in, on uh, this uh, matter of pride woke uh, in Washington, D.C. at the White House. There was a, a, a transgender there that uh, took off his blouse after he had had uh, his, his uh, breast implants and was making a big deal right there at the White House. I've never thought of such ungodly stuff. I can't imagine a president would allow that kind of stuff. But when you've got an ungodly president, you're going to have that. And that's what we got. We've got an ungodly president. We've got ungodly people that are in charge. And friends, let me tell you something. They are destroying this country. And God has something to say about it. This may be the last message I ever preach, but let me tell you something. I'm going to share with you something tonight that I think it's important. We need for God's deliverance. We need for his deliverance. Look with me for it says, pray for God to defend and to deliver you. We need to ask God to deliver. Notice what verse number one says. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation, or deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. God, here the psalmist is telling the people, God telling God, God, listen, look at me, plead my, I get, uh, do something about this ungodly nation, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For thou art the God of my strength. Why does that cast me off? Why go I in mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? This breaking, the psalmist says, it's breaking my heart to see what's taking place here. After crying out to God about his troubled soul, the psalmist prayer, uh, prayed about the critical situation in which he found himself. So with boldness and firm conviction, he asked God to judge or vindicate him. See, he had gone along, he had gone along with his stuff and he said, I'm not going to do that anymore. He determined that he was innocent of his enemy's accusation. The psalmist then wanted God to plead his cause and to defend him before the people and God and God alone could deliver him from such oppression. I think about all the things that's being done to Trump. Now I don't I know he's done some things wrong, but I have never known a man, at least in my lifetime, to go through what he's gone through and the people of this country, the leaders of this country doing it to him. Friends, if you have any sense at all, you will stand against this, because this is going to happen to you. This same thing is going to come your way. Because if they can get away, to, get away with the President of the United States, just imagine what they can do with an everyday person. This is terrible, folks. We have gone backwards. We are defending the wicked and the vile. We're letting them go free. We're allowing our prisons to be set free. We're allowing people to go in the streets and murder and do... This is wrong. This is not what God intended for America. 
Notice this in verse number 1. Because you live in an ungodly nation among deceitful and wicked people. Because you live, that's what we're living in. We're living in an ungodly nation among deceitful and wicked people. We have to stand up. He says, by describing his oppressors as ungodly, the psalmist was likely saying that they did not know the Lord because they were ungodly neighbors, fellow workers, or, or the people of a heathen nation. Whatever the case, because they were not living by God, holy is all, they were deceitful, and their attacks upon him in unjust their judgment. I hear people complaining about what Russia is doing to the Ukraine. Friends, we are no better. Look what we're doing to ourselves. Look at what we're doing to our families. We are destroying this nation. We might as well take a gun and shoot people just like Russia's doing because that's exactly what the government's doing. It's shooting people. It's tearing the families up. It's doing all these things that it shouldn't be done because it, it wants the power. We've got wicked people. We've got to pray and ask God to stop it. We need to get on our knees because God can do something about it. Why? Because God is your strength. He's your refuge. He's your heaven. Look at verse number 2 with me, please. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I in mourning because of the oppression? Lord, this, is, this bothers me. I can't take it. God, I need for you to step in. Because God is your strength. If he's your strength, you need to pray and ask God to help you. Then, notice not only that. Because... Because he, you feel rejected by God. Yet some of you might even feel that, where is God in all this? Where is, you ever people say, where is your God? Where, where, why doesn't he do something about all this? Where is he? The Bible says that we destroy ourselves among ourselves. God is not going to stop the nation from doing what it's doing unless the people come to him and get on their knees and ask him. We have to get on our knees and pray and seek God. This nation needs to come back to God. It's time for it to find its way. Why? Because of all of the suffering and oppression that's taking place. Cities. I, I listened the other night to the Hannity program with, with the California governor. I can't believe that guy is a sick guy. He's, he's, he's really messed up. And you know what? He's going to run for president probably. And then you take him and you take Biden. You take Pelosi. You take all that bunch that's up there. You take Schiff. My goodness, friends, what a mess we got in this nation. And here's the interesting thing. People voted him in. Because we feel rejected, the psalmist felt that God had cast him off, that he, had for, that he had forsaken and rejected him. No doubt the grief of his oppressors caused him was agonizing, but even more unbearable was the feeling that he was separated from God. He needed God, and he yearned for fellowship with him. My friends, let me tell you something. When you live in a wicked world like we're living in, when you live in wicked times, people end up, as much as they love God, doing the things that everybody else does. And that's exactly what's happening. We're seeing our, our families destroyed. We're seeing our nation destroyed from within. And we see things happening every day, and nobody's doing anything about it. We're allowing the government to to cap, to uh, to uh, go after our people, put our people in jail. Look what they did with January 6th. Over a thousand people, and many of those people weren't guilty about anything. They didn't do anything that major that they needed to spend 10 years in jail, but yet someone can kill somebody and be let loose. I have never heard of anything like this, friends. It's sickening. It breaks me to the bone knowing that I fought for this country and spent my time in Vietnam to, for, uh, for peace and for prosperity in this country and watching this country do what it's doing. Friends, I'm going to tell you something. I came home to a mess. I came home to people that were spitting on me. I came home to people that did, called me a baby killer and everything else. I'm going to tell you something. I've seen the oppression that the people that put on people. I've watched it. I've seen many soldiers go off and take a gun and shoot themselves because they couldn't handle it. We're seeing this every day. I was reading an article today about what Russia had done to a couple of soldiers. They had castrated these young men, 25 years old, and these young men came home and they wanted to kill themselves because of what they'd done. Friends, we are no better than Russia. We're no better than them. 
We are just as wicked and just as vile. The only thing we're not doing is shooting them, but we are. Look at the streets. Look at the number of people being killed. They want to blame it on guns. Guns is not the problem. People is the problem. But guns don't shoot themselves. People are the ones that use the gun to shoot. Now you take the guns away with your lives. This is the wickedness that we're living in. Oh, we need to wake up. This country needs to wake up. And you are a part of it. I hope you take this message and put it out there. The old, probably the FBI will probably come after me for what I've said. More than likely. But let me tell you, the, the thing is this. I'm 78 years old. I ain't got too long to go. I know where I'm going. I'm going to be with Jesus. That's what's important. But we know something. If we don't have people stand up for what's right, we're in trouble. Think about this for a minute. At various times in our lives, we find ourselves trapped in situations over which we have no control. That's where we are right now. Like the psalmist, we may be victims of slander or false judgment by people who want to hurt us. Or we may be facing grave illness or uh, marital or family problems, financial crisis, or the death of a loved one. At some point in time, we will all know the feelings of being powerless to change any incredible, grievous situation. This is not going to get any better. It's not. Listen to me. People are crazy in what they're doing. Biden is not the president of the United States. He's a wicked old man. And if you know something, he's crazy. The other day he groped a woman. I'm telling you something, folks. And you know what? The media didn't want to do anything about it. The media is just there passed by. The wicked, vile media. And I can name some of them on there. They're as vile as can be. The view has got a bunch of vile individual women that are as wicked as, as Jezebel in the Bible. Wicked individuals. And you know something? They listen. They, people listen to the program because they, got the, they have the stats on it. People ought to shut that thing down. They ought to shut it off. You might as well turn around and watch naked women all day long and everything else that goes on because that's just as wild as that is there. When we reach the end of ourselves and our abilities, we need to remember that God can do what he cannot do. His strength is revealed through our weaknesses and our inability. Thankfully, he invites us to come boldly to his holy throne, seeking grace and mercy and help us in our time of need. He is there for us. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16. You see, my friends, let me tell you something. We're living crushing times. Whatever the pressing or the pressure of crushing circumstances, we have a tendency to prone to question God, his love and his care for us. It's easy to feel that he has rejected or forsaken us. And such times we must rest in his promises to never leave us nor forsake us. He vows to stand by us in the fiery trials of life. We may not always understand why God permits us to face the grievous situations. But we can be sure that he does not allow us to go through them alone. You can consider Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Just as he was in his faithful servants in their time of dire need, he will surely be with us. I think about all those soldiers and all those people that are fighting over in the Ukraine. They're fighting for freedom. They're fighting that for their families. They're fighting that they can keep their land. I'm going to tell you something. You are, you're giving up on your land. You're giving up. You're not going to own anything. You're going to be just like many nations. You're going to be just like Russia. You're not going to have a thing. You're going to let the government take it all away from you. That's exactly what you're going to do. And you're allowing a man up there. You talked about Trump. Some of you made a big deal. Let me tell you something. Biden is ten times worse than what Trump was. Ten times more evil than Trump ever had been. Biden is sick as a dog, man. Can't you see it? He's sick in the head. Has been for years. Has been. And now this money situation with him and that of taking millions and millions of dollars, that's true. Where did he get the money from? Where did he get all this stuff? He didn't have that stuff. He had to get it from somewhere and he surely didn't earn it. He didn't make it up in Washington as a senator. 
Friends, open up your mind. He didn't win the lottery either. Let me tell you something. He got it. He, he got it by selling out the United States. His son is a traitor. A traitor. I'm telling you something. Traitors are shot. Traitors are killed for doing what they're doing. We've had people die, go to prison for the rest of their life for what his son has done, and even what he's done. Now, they're trying to put Trump in jail over some documents. Let me tell you something. What documents that Trump had is nothing compared to what Biden is doing to this nation. Nothing. Won't we'll touch it. But yet, the media and then the uh, justice system is totally, completely after why are they after Trump? Because he wants to change America to what it should be. Maybe he's not the right guy at the right moment, but he is the guy that could do it. He proved it to us before. Notice here. We're looking to God. He is our helper. And we need to understand that I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Hebrews chapter 13, 5, 6. We have to stand on the precepts of God. And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock in whom I will trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge. My Savior, thou savest me from violence. Second Samuel chapter 22, verses 2 and 3. David speaking. Oh, my friends, do you understand? People have fought and, and for all the freedoms that they have, and we continue to fight for the freedoms that we have. But you know what? We're giving them all up. We're giving them all up. We have people up there lying, talking about fighting. People are suffering. Communities are suffering because they don't have the money. And slowly but surely, they're starting to, the things are starting to really happen to their families. The medical system is not what it used to be. It's not near what it used to be. He says, I will be with thee. And though the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flank kindle upon thee. Isaiah chapter 43, 2. I've asked the question many, many times. Why did God allow me to come home from Vietnam when all of my friends were killed there? Most of them, and most of the rest of them died since I've been home. Why was it that I got away? Why was it that I got home? Why was it that I lived through there? And I came to the conclusion one day it was because God wanted me to share his message. That's when I got saved and that's when I became a man of God. Because I realized God had done something for me that nobody else could do. Not only did he save my soul, he saved my life. And friends, let me tell you something. When God does something for you and you remember it, you will do what God says. The problem is today, nobody's looking to God. We're not seeing the fire in the pulpits that we used to see. At least at the bigger and larger churches. They're compromising. Next thing you know, they'll have these uh, uh, gals coming in. They're not gals, guys coming in as gals and all this kind of stuff that's going on. I'm telling you something. This transgender thing, this woke thing is tearing up our nation and tearing up our families. And I believe, I really believe this, friends, I, I, I really do. I believe that sooner or later, there's enough American people here in this country, they're going to finally stand up against it. They're going to riot against it. And the next thing you know, we're going to be in a revolution because of what we're allowing these people to do. And then we're going to wonder why we see our families dying in the streets. Why they're fighting for freedom, just as they are in the Ukraine. It's coming, friends. It's coming. Because people like that, like Russia, like Putin, they're going to take advantage of you, and they want to control you, and when they can't, they're going to try to kill you. And that's exactly what they do. That's what the tyrants have done for years and years. Read your Bible. Read history. Don't sit back and do nothing. And he says, and even to your old age, I am he. And even to the, the hoary hairs which I carry you, I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. Isaiah 40, 46 verse 4. God says, I'll go with you into the old age. I'll, I'll be with you always. The question is, how can we solve this problem? Here's how we can solve it. Ask God to restore you. To bring you back to where you need to be if you've left God. If you've never known God, then get to know God. That's what the that's the answer. Ask God to restore you. The psalmist again asked God to deliver him from his pit of despair. 
He needed God to restore him to a place of joy and peace. For him, this man had returned to the place where God's presence dwelled. He entreated God to bring him back to come home to Jerusalem, back to the temple where he would once again worship in the Lord's presence. The psalmist reasoned that the restoration could only come after God had vindicated or defend him before his enemies. Someone asked me a while back, why is it churches uh, have dropped away from having three services a week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and just basically have one? Because you know what? They have been deceived by Satan. The more you get people in church, even if it's only ten people, the more chance you have that they'll follow God and do what God says. You put a person in church for one hour, that's not enough. That's not enough because most of them don't read their Bible. Most of them have no prayer time. Most of them have no quiet time. So you see, what they've done, they've taken the God out of the schools. They've taken God out of the homes. And then pretty soon they're going to take God off the map because they're trying right now to destroy the Bible, to take away the Bible. They're doing everything they can. Destroy anything that has to do with God. That is as evil as you can. That's Satanism, folks. That's as evil as you can get. We are to give the light of truth to guide others. The psalmist realized that his own conduct, his words and actions, played a part in his restoration. Therefore, we ask, he asked God to lead or guide him by his light and his truth. <clears throat> Just as God had led the Israelites through the wilderness, and into the promised land, the psalmist prayed that God would guide him each step of the way back to Jerusalem. He was not asking for geographical directions, but the personal direction. What he should do and how he should conduct himself. See, the problem is today everybody's trying to find a way, but they're going the wrong way. They're going the wrong way. You don't find God in bar rooms. You don't find God in drugs. You don't find God in those places. You have to come to him. God is waiting for you. And then I want you to notice something else. Look at verse number three with me just for a moment. In verse number three, notice what it says. It says, O oh, send out the light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto the holy hill and to thy tabernacle. Send out the light. What is it like? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus is the answer. You have to come to Jesus. He's the answer. And the only thing that's going to save America is for this country to turn back to God. That's the only thing that's going to save it. Nothing else. Oh, send out the light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me into the holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Friends, let me tell you something. The only way it's going to happen is for you to come back to God. That's how it's going to happen. And he says, Then, verse number four, will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy, yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. So important to understand, you've got to make the choice to come back to God. God is there for you. He is there to help you. He will restore you. To give God your light and truth is to guide you. The psalmist realized that his own conduct and his words and actions played a part in his restoration. We have to see ourselves for what we really are and then to lead you into his presence. That's exactly what he wants to do and the place where he lives. That's where Jesus is at. The psalmist prayed that God's light, Jesus, and truth would bring him back to the Lord's holy hill which is Mount Zion in Jerusalem. Mount Zion is called a holy hill because it was the location of the Lord's tabernacle. The place on earth where God dwelled among his people. You see, my friends, it's all up to you. It's up to us as a nation. And then notice what verse number four says. He says, Then will I go unto the altar of God. My God, exceeding joy. Yea, upon the heart will I praise the O God of my God. See, until we come to him, we'll never know his joy. We'll never know what he can do for us. See, to make us, to put us into that place, to make way for you to worship and praise him, that's God who is the source of your joy, verse 4. From the very beginning of this song, 
the exiled psalmist emphasized his heart's burning desire to experience God's presence again. Note the progression of the increase and the closeness to God. You know what really gets me today? I was taught this a long time ago, and I listen to preachers. I, a preacher came to me one time, and he says, unless you feel the burning in your belly to preach the gospel, unless you're just driven by God so much to preach the gospel, it'll never come out. It'll never be powerful enough. A lot of times what I hear from preachers is nothing but words. There's no power behind it. There's no passion behind it. There's no real exaltation behind it. If you know God and he's burning within you, you can't help but let it out. You know, I, I've been listening. I've been holding back for a while because I've been trying to teach. But boy, I'll tell you something. God got a hold of me as I was praying today and thinking about this. And he said, David, you got to get back. you got to get it out there. Friends, let me tell you something. There is a world that needs Jesus Christ. He needs you. He needs you to come to Christ. We need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. We need to put our hope in God and praise Him for He is our Savior in our God. Notice that. We need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. You're not going to find any encouragement in any place else but in the Lord. The song closes with that now familiar refrain of self-encouragement until God delivered him from his oppressors and returned him to Jerusalem the psalmist determined to live above depression and despair as he evaluated the reasons why he was so downcast and disturbed he realized that his hope in God was greater than all the circumstances that depressed him God was his Savior and his God. Triumphantly, he resolved to praise him regardless of his circumstances. You know, the only thing I can come to, and, I, and I'm, I'm really saying this, and I may be wrong, but the only thing I can come to that with Donald Trump and what he's going through, he must have some type of relationship with God. There's no man that could go through what he's going through and take what he's taken without the help of God. No one. No one. I've known a lot of men. I've known a lot of great men. But let me tell you something. I don't care what all, all these uh, people out there talk about. I believe that he's doing what he's doing because he feels God wants him to do it. Did you know that's what, why Putin does what he does? He thinks God wants, God wants him to clean up the earth. That's what, that's what he said. Yeah. He's going to clean up. He's going to get rid of all the Nazis. Friends, let me tell you something. There's some wild people out there. But you know something? Trump doesn't want to hurt anybody. He wants to help people. He wants to lead people. He wants to see them get the things that they need to have. He wants to see them survive in this country. And let me tell you something, folks. If you lose your sight on God, if you lose what God wants you to do, you'll never do anything. And if you stand for God, you're going to have everybody against you. I know. I've been doing this for 50 years. I've preached across this nation. I've preached around the world. I've had people who like me, people who hate me, people who come up to me and tell me that they hated me to my face because of what I preached. For whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Romans fifteen four. Listen, the word of God is there to help us, friends, and that word of God is there to help you. And the word of God needs to be preached. Notice this, and we desire that every one of you does show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye may not be slothful but followers of them who faith through faith and patience and inherit the promise. Hebrews chapter eleven, chapter six, verses eleven and twelve. It all it all boils down that our nation needs to come to God. It needs to. And the only way it's going to come to God is if it turns its face toward God. And until we as the people start to come together and pray and seek his face, it's not going to happen. This nation that we live in has moved a long ways from God. We've allowed everything in the world to come into our presence. We've allowed kids to kill kids. We've allowed people to, uh, 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 through abortion, kill babies. They've killed the babies through abortion. Now they want to kill the children through transgender. Oh my goodness, friends, where are we going to? <clears throat> we are coming and becoming as evil a nation as any nation in the world. And David was greatly distressed. For the people, the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. 
every man for his sons and for the daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. First Samuel chapter 30, verse number 6. You know, we have got to take a stand. I remember when I was in Vietnam years ago, we were in a place where it was really bad. The fire, it was really, really, really bad. And I was moving ahead with fire and maneuvering. And I thought I was, I thought I was going to die that day. But for some reason, I just kept pushing ahead, kept pushing ahead, realizing that I needed to get where I needed to get and hoping that I'd get there and get there safe. I watched other men around me get shot. I watched some die that day. But God allowed me to make it through the battle. God will take you through the battle. God will get you through the battle. Over the years, over the years, I suffered many things, not because of uh, the war, but because of health and other things. But God has always been through me. He's always helped me. I had my first heart spell when I was 35 years old. Oh, listen to me, friends. I know who God is, and I know He can help. And it's so easy for us to get away. It's so easy for us to get away from Him. The Bible says, be of good courage. Good courage. And He shall strengthen you, and strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Psalm 31, 24. See, friends, we have to turn to Him as a nation. Because if we don't turn to him, our nation is doomed. And I think it's already doomed. A nation that is losing its way. I wrote a book several years ago, and America can never be great again. Well, I'm writing this second edition of it now, and I'm going beyond where I was. I brought it, when I wrote the book, I was up to date. It was during the Obama years. But now I've gone on. And I picked it up after the Obama years, picking it up through the Trump years, and now into the Biden years, and showing you the decay of this nation, how it's gone through everything, step by step. We've gone backwards. We have lost our way. We've lost it, friends, and we're going to lose our nation. It's going to be gone. It may be gone before my life ends. I know it will be gone after my life ends because I know that it cannot continue in the path that it's going. Listen to the people around you. Look at the people around you. See the way the world is and see what is happening. Friends, if you open your eyes, truly open your eyes, it'll make you sick for what you will see. It will literally make you sick if you have any type of values, any type of uh, understanding of God. It will make you sick to your stomach to see where this nation is going. It is go The forefathers, the founding fathers of this country are rolling over in their grave knowing the things that the people in Washington are doing, what the people are doing on the streets. Can you understand that, friends? This We are falling apart. We're falling apart. If we get four more years of Biden or whoever's up there and we don't get the right person there, this nation is doomed, friends. It's gone. Unless someone comes in with some moral values. Unless someone comes in that's willing to stand and willing to even die for this country. One of the great founders said, give me, Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. My friends, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to have to take that kind of stand if you want liberty because it's going to come to a place that you're going to be asked whether or not you're willing to stand for what's right. And if not, you'll die. It's coming. It's coming. They're coming to your door. They're coming to my door. They're already doing it. They want to destroy anybody that's good, anybody that's against them, anybody that won't go along with them. This is exactly what they're trying to do. This was, this was done in biblical times. They hated the Jews. They wanted to destroy the Jews. Hitler hated the Jews. We can go on and think about what the, what the Turks did over in, uh, uh, in, in Armenia. Look at what's happened. Look what's going on around the world. Look at what the Russians are doing to the Ukraine. They have, these, some of those people are kin to one another. It's like a civil war. Kin one another. All over because one dictator, one crazy, no count piece of garbage is leading them to do that. Just like Hitler did. Just like Stalin did. Just like Mussolini did. And we can go on back through characters in the Bible who did the same thing. Friends, we are coming somewhere along the line to an end of this. God's going to say, no more. 
no more. I've had it. I've had it. I created you to be a decent people, to love one another and care, but you have gone astray, just like they did back in, in the Genesis account when he had to send uh, the ark when Noah was taken over and the whole world was destroyed. Oh, listen to me, friends. It's coming. God is going to get his fill sooner or later, and you better find him. You better get to him, because listen, he's going to do something about it. You trust Jesus tonight. You ask him to come into your heart and say, God, forgive me for the directions I've taken, for the way I've gone. Help me, God. I want to get on the right course. I want to do what's right. Trust Jesus tonight. Let him become your Savior and your Lord. He'll take you through the battle. He'll take you through the storm. And in the end, he'll take you to heaven because that's what it's all about. Father, help our folks tonight that they will come to you and trust you Dear God, help our nation. It needs help. It's falling apart. It is so sin-stricken. It is so evil in so many ways. Please, God, please have your way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This is Dave Smeltz of the Voice of Victory saying I hope that you have a blessed night tonight and I hope that you will trust in the Lord and let him be your savior and I hope that you will get back with me again on Wednesday night. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being a part of this message. God bless you. Keep a smile on your face, a song in your heart and go and tell someone about Jesus today for he loves you. God bless you and amen.